Welcome back to video two. Um, video one looked at chains of reasoning for one paragraph. What I'm going to go through now then is the kind of expected structures, how many paragraphs you need um, per question. I'll start off just by taking you through how economics works. This will be more relevant to those in year one, hopefully year two know this. Economics at a level carries uh, four themes. So you've got uh, theme one, which is microeconomics, theme two, which is macro, theme three, which goes back to micro, theme four goes back to macro. If you follow my cursor, these themes are then split down to papers. So paper one will assess microeconomics. It will be theme one and theme three. Paper two will assess macro and it will address theme two and theme four. Paper three is micro, macro combined. And we're not going to go into that today particularly. I'll take you through the structures, but uh, we'll be doing more work on paper three, especially with the year twos as we go on throughout the year. But obviously that is things one, two, three and four combined. Now, before we get on this, then um, you're going to see a lot of P's. The key is this P means paragraph. OK. And the other thing to flag up is that. And I'm, again, I'm going to put this document um, on classroom for you to be able to see paper one micro and paper two macro both carry the same structure. So what I will do because I'm a macro teacher, I'm going to go through um, the macro paper. But what you'll recognize is that if you scroll backwards, you'll see exactly the same thing for paper one micro. Paper three, sadly, a bit different, but I'll take you through that in a bit. I'll also just quickly skirt through the kind of leveling systems for marking, but your teachers will teach you more about that. I wrote this a few years ago. Um, this was based on a sample on a specimen paper. Nothing has really changed. The Generally speaking, we have section A, which is advised to spend about half an hour on. Um, and then that will be five questions, all very random. They could put in multiple choices. They could put in written questions. It's totally up to the examiner. Section B is your essays and will always follow the same kind of structure. But I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So section eight, five questions. You're advised to spend half an hour or, or about on there. Your multiple choice responses will carry one mark for knowledge. You tick a box. Simple as that. You're then going to be getting um, a range of written questions. So you could have um, kind of a short mathematical question, one mark for knowledge, one mark for application. You might have a longer calculation, so four marks for knowledge, and you're showing um, a four-step calculation. State your formulas, show your workings. You may have a written four marker, which in terms of a structure for that, usually it's going to be defined. So your first paragraph is going to be giving the definition to answer the question, and then paragraph two, we're just looking for one um, data reference per paragraph for that paragraph and one line of analysis. Okay, so the one line of analysis is simply tying up the question. You could have a knowledge four marker, which is just draw a diagram to show and then no written explanation needed unless it's specifically asked for. You simply draw a diagram. We need the axis label correctly. We need the curves label correctly. We need the correct shifts and we need the correct annotations. All right, simple as that. We go to section B. Let us take a look. Can I fit this all on one page? I can. And as I put there, section B essays for paper two are the same as paper one. You're going to have a five marker. All right. For a five marker, you want to put in a definition in one paragraph. Paragraph two, one data reference per paragraph, one line of analysis for one mark each. So you basically need for that five marker a couple of paragraphs, okay? Simple as that. A definition, a bit of a use of data, and then one sentence of analysis to link back to the question. There's no leveling on this question. I'll explain that when I get towards the end of this video. For an eight marker, you are going to give one definition um, in one paragraph. You then need to develop two separate issues. Therefore, what we want is two Ps. We want two paragraphs of analysis over two issues, okay, to answer the question. Your fourth paragraph, you want one evaluation point. So you want one however. Think about the space, the amount of space available. Think about we're going to be working at a mark a minute, so we don't need a huge essay here, but a simple definition, two paragraphs of analysis, one paragraph of evaluation. 
You're also going to have two marks available for application, for use of the evidence, for use of the resources available. That could be diagrams, that could be charts, could be pie charts, it could be written, okay? And again, no levelling on this question. We then go to, I tell you what, I'll go to the 12 marker, um, I'll explain why I've done it in this order in a minute. For a 12 marker, one paragraph defining, absolutely fine. You're then going to develop two issues again, so that's two paragraphs of analysis over two issues. And then paragraph four and five, you've got four marks available for evaluation, so think about this. You could do two shorter paragraphs of evaluation, two howevers, two counterpoints, or you could do one kind of big, chunky um, evaluative paragraph. That's totally up to you. We've kind of said paragraphs four and five, um, but you don't have to do that. The 10 marker, uh, paragraph one definition. Again, two issues developed. Are you seeing a running theme here? Two paragraphs of analysis over two issues. And then again, paragraph four and five, two evaluation points. Uh, and in two for application as well. For the 15 marker, we've got two marks for diagram or issues, depending on the question. We would want to see for a 15 marker really a, um, a diagram. And these 15 markers are like mini 25 markers. So we're going to be following the same format. We need two paragraphs of analysis. Uh, and then paragraphs four and five are going to be given the howevers, the, the counterpoints, the evaluations. And there's six marks available for evaluation. Okay, so the evaluation is absolutely key on this question. You're getting three marks for use of evidence and data as well. Hope that all makes sense. Just think P means paragraph. Don't worry yet about there's no leveling on this question for the fives and the eights, and I'll explain why I've done five, eight, 12, 10, 15 in a minute. This section C advice um, is about the 25 marker, and I'll go into more detail on that 25 marker on video three. Simply speaking, a few key points, a plan is highly desirable, even jotting down a few key ideas. What you wanna do, you wanna create your first point, you want to counterbalance it with critical assessment. You then have your second point of analysis, your second evaluation, your counterpoint, and your critical assessment. Then your conclusion depends upon factors, value judgments. I'll come to that in a bit. Essentially speaking, people, you're making two points of analysis with longer chains of reasoning, going out towards wider aspects, be as broad as you want there. Analyzing paragraphs, analysis paragraphs, sorry, need four chains of analysis. Evaluation paragraphs need four chains of evaluation. So there you go, paragraph one, raise your first point, fully expand it with four chains of reasoning. Paragraph two, Ooh, this says raise point two and fully expand with four chains of analysis. Absolutely fine. Paragraph three is raising your first evaluation point. Paragraph four, raising your next evaluation point. But there's nothing stopping you going. Paragraph one, raise your first point. Paragraph two, evaluate your first point. Paragraph three, raise your second point. Paragraph four, evaluate your second point. Totally up to you. Whatever you feel flows more logically, certainly in my mind, and certainly the better essays that I read, point evaluation, point evaluation, conclude. And you're going to conclude your essay, put in your views. These have got to be your views, your opinion, your economic reasoning. Make a decision, justify it. You can bring in external factors, Brexit, confidence levels in the economy, coronavirus maybe. Yeah, have a think about that. All right, very quickly on to paper three. Um, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. Paper three, micro and macro combined, and you do all of this twice. So you do a five marker, an eight marker, a 12 marker, a 25 marker. You do a five marker, an eight marker, a 12 marker, and a 25 marker. That adds up to 100 as far as I am aware. Yeah, it does indeed, 25. There you go. The structures are no different to what I just took you through, so I'm not going to say anything about that. And as I said, as the year moves on, certainly for year twos, I don't think year ones need to worry about paper three as yet. We'll be telling you more. I went to a meeting of um, examiners um, of Edexcel a couple of years ago, and these were the kind of the, the, the key, I don't know, what do you want to call it? The key takeaways, if you will, um, that they wanted students to know. So I'm just going to run that through you now through that with you now even. So they love Peel, and if you look at my um, chains of reasoning video, chains of analysis video, that structure lets you Peel. 
if you don't chain of reason, if you don't do chains of analysis, you cannot access the higher marks. So they want the depth of thought. They want paragraphs linked back to the question. Keep going back to the question to check you're keeping to the point. Keep reading over that question as you go through. When you're evaluating, the examiners recommend something called APE. Um, what they're asking you to do, they say assumptions underlying the theory may not hold. They're saying challenge theory. Okay? Challenge the theory. Challenge what you know in economics. Evaluate via the perspectives of differing economic agents. In macro, we always talk about consumers, firms, governments, wider society, future generations, etc. Think about your evaluation. If you watched um, video one, we were talking about a kind of example question on using um, or increasing productivity via using machines. I did make the point, more machines, more capital, less labor. Well, if we were going to evaluate, if we were going to conclude on that question, that's great for manufacturers of machinery that other firms want to buy. But perspectives of differing economic agents, workers lose out. There will be unemployment. So while firms will gain through the use of machinery and Firms that produce capital goods will gain in profit levels. People will lose out. Workers will lose out. And for the 25 mark, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to come back to this in the third video, we need to be using real world knowledge and real world evidence. Okay. Big diagrams are needed. And, you know, going through the um, first couple of weeks with my year ones, I've seen some very small diagrams, okay? Some of you guys, I did not write you guys, but it's there. Some of you draw tiny little diagrams that are hard to work out. Big is better, but not too big. And diagrams must be explained. I said in the Chains of Reasoning video, you need to explain the diagram. You cannot, the, the diagram backs up a point that you're making or shows, it, it shows graphically, diagrammatically obviously, a point that you're making. You can't just dump in a diagram and leave it there with no explanation. You're gaining no credit for that, okay? So don't forget, examiners are saying this, this is not just me and your teachers, your level four responses, your top, your grade A responses, you need four chains of reasoning and you need to be linking that to your economic agents. Always think consumers, firms, government, society, future generations. The examiners are saying it's not just us, you need to plan for the 25 marker. I often, when um, I'm doing in-class assessments and we set 25 markers and I see students just start writing, that strikes fear into me, okay? Examiners would rather see a plan than a bulky definition-led introduction. They don't want for a 25 marker if it is about, I don't know, I'll stick with productivity. Productivity is this, labor is this, capital is this, aggregate supply is this. They already know that. They don't need to know that again. Evaluation needs to be reinforced as critical assessment, not just a simple other side. We need to be thinking about depends on factors, especially for conclusions. You need to be making your own value judgments. You all know what a value judgment is. Normative statements. Give your opinions. Keep it interesting. You work to mark a minute. They put, like, for each question, they put in a set amount of lines, but that assumes that some of you have got clown writing like me, huge writing, and some of you have got small writing, okay? The other bit of advice is to use a normal calculator, not a scientific one. It does get on my nerves when students don't bring calculators. In-class assessments, okay, it's, it's not okay, but what, what am I going to do? For a main public exam in the sports hall, you would be amazed at the amount of students for econ who don't bring a calculator. You need to bring a calculator, okay? And go to Poundland, get a cheap one, okay? What the examiners are saying they've seen evidence of wrong answers on calculation questions which show understanding of the question, but because the student couldn't work out their own calculator because it had 5,000 buttons on it, they were never going to get the right answer. Keep it simple. Final calculation responses should be circled and or underlined if you are calculating an index number, if the question asks for that or whatever, you need to make sure that you have totally flagged up the answer to the examiner. And the reason why I didn't put on the um, previous page the 5, 8, 10, 12, 15 is because they can put the essays in whatever order they want. They could start with a 12, go to an 8, then a 15, etc, etc. Students should know this and not panic. And that's from the examiners. All right.
So last thing on this, and I'm going to let you read this in your own time, and your teachers will be showing you these. These are the way that we're going to be marking the 12, 10, 15, and the 25 markers. So let's go through just one example of the 12 marker. You get on the 12 marker up to eight marks for knowledge, application, and analysis. There you go, up to eight marks. And for evaluation, you're going to score up to four marks, okay? So you've written your essay. I get it in front of me to mark. If I give you a zero, you've written complete nonsense. That shouldn't be happening. A level one answer for knowledge, application, and analysis is going to score you a maximum of two marks. Imprecise knowledge, poor understanding of terms, no understanding of theories and diagrams, generic information or examples, descriptive approach, just basically telling us everything that you know about economics and there's no change of reasoning. So you want to score yourself two? Do that. I wouldn't advise it. The level two will get you a maximum of five elements of knowledge and understanding, concepts are being shown, so we're getting better now, we're taking the economic theories, we're relating them to the context, we're using the evidence available, but maybe we're just missing the point of the question just a little bit. Maybe the response is a bit narrow. Maybe there's chains of reasoning, but you've only gone two chains, three chains, not four. Okay, so the answer's improving. This is where you all want to be, ladies and gentlemen. Level three, six to eight. Demonstrate accurate knowledge. You know your economics like the back of your hand. You understand every concept in the question, every principle, and your diagrams are on point. You can link knowledge and understanding to the context perfectly using relevant and focused examples, don't, which are fully integrated. Does it mean just copying out data? It means taking data, manipulations, calculations, taking key information from the case study and using it to back up your chains of reasoning. You select ideas carefully. You don't waffle. You don't talk nonsense. You don't talk rubbish. And there are logical and coherent chains of reasoning. That's where you want to be, people. Again, on the evaluation, don't evaluate. You're going to get no marks. If you want to get yourself a maximum of two for evaluation, you identify generic evaluative comments with no evidence. We always talk about time lags in economics as an evaluative comment, and time lags are very true. Education to increase productivity takes time. Okay, You start school at four, you leave university at 21. That's 17 years worth of education. You can't just try it. The problem of education is time lags, full stop. You need to, to get that full mark to reason out the time lag. Why is that a problem? What's that going to do to productivity in the short run? But then think about the productivity of society in the long run, if we're all highly educated. You're also recognizing different viewpoints, and you may criticize the evidence, okay? Don't, don't, be, you know, don't be shy. Be bold in your answers. Criticize the evidence. If the evidence you feel isn't right, maybe politically, maybe economically, you can question that. And then, on the rest of this sheet, you've got your 10 markers, etc., etc. I'm not going to go through the 25 because we're going to do that on a separate video. Hope video two was of use. See you on video three for the 25 marker.